Hi and welcome to our next tutorial video everyone. In this video, I'm going to try to figure out how computer systems send data. And as we saw in the first unit, we learned about packets and we know that inside a packet is a bunch of data, specifically ones and zeros. It has an IP address. In fact, it has a destination IP address. It has a source IP address. So it has a bunch of information in it. We're going to try to figure out how computer systems send data. Before we do that, we have to make sure we understand the binary number system. Remember that binary numbers are numbers made up of zeros and ones. So here, this number has six bits in it. It has six binary numbers. So that's an example of a binary number. Note that there are no twos or threes or fours or fives and so on. It's only ones and zeros. Binary numbers are used in computer systems. They're used in computer programming. So it's important we understand how this works. And first, we should understand how to count in binary. In binary, we start counting at 0, and then we go to 1. But then after 1, there is no 2. There is no 3. So what we have to do is we actually have to go to here. We're going to go to 1, 0 next. So counting in binary, start at 0, then we go to 1, and then we go 1, 0, and then we go 1, 1. But then again, we can't go to 1, 2, or 1, 3. We have to move up to 100. So counting in binary starts at 0, then it goes 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, and then it goes to 1, and then three zeros, and then 1, 0, 0, 1, and so on. Now, just like the decimal number system has ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, the binary system has something very similar. It has the ones position, which is here, then it's the twos position, then it's the fours, then it's the eights, 16s, 32s, 64s, and 128s. Where do those numbers come from? Those are all base two numbers. This position here is the two to the zero position. This is the two to the one position. This is two to the two, two to the three, two to the four, two to the five, and so on. So that's how we count in binary. So if I use their animation here, and if we start at zero, and if I double click to start counting, it starts at binary value one. And then it goes one zero, then it goes one one, then it goes one zero zero, then it goes one zero one, then it goes one one zero, then it goes one one one, then it goes one zero zero zero, one zero zero one, one zero one zero, one zero one one, and so on. So that is how we count in binary. Just like a decimal number, this has the least significant value. This has the most significant value. In a binary number, we say this is the least significant bit. This is the most significant bit. If we were to compare decimal versus binary, it would look like this. Zero in decimals, the same as zero binary. One in decimals, the same as one binary. But after that, everything is different. Decimal two is equal to this. Decimal three is equal to this. Decimal four is equal to this. Decimal five is equal to this, and so on. So why do we need to understand this? Well, when you strike a key on a keyboard, it creates one byte of information, or eight bits. What specifically eight bits are produced? Well, engineers have sat down, and they've come up with what we call the ASCII table. The ASCII table is a table agreed upon by all engineers so that no matter who makes a keyboard, Dell or HP or Acer or Apple, they're all going to follow the ASCII code protocol. In other words, if I type 
capital A. What happens when I type capital A? Well, what I do is I look in the ASCII chart and I say, so capital A is right here. It's represented by decimal 65. So if I write that over here, 65 in decimal, so I'll put 10 here to remind me that's a decimal number. How do I convert that to binary? Well, here's what you do. Here's all the values of the positions. We say 64 goes into 65 once. So I'm going to subtract 64 off here, and I'm left with 1. Then I say, well, does 32 go into 1? No. So I put a 0 here. Does 16 go into 1? No. Does 8 go into 1? No. 4 go into 1? No. 2 go into 1? No. But 1 does. So I put a 1 there, and then I subtract, and I'm left with 0. So what does that tell me? It tells me that decimal 65 is equal to this binary number here. And just like a decimal number, I read from left to right. So decimal 65 is equal to 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 in binary. And sometimes you'll see a 2 down here to represent that this number is a binary number, just to remind you. Let's take a look at another example. So if I just clear everything here, and let's choose a different letter. Let's say on the keyboard, we strike a lowercase b. So if I strike a lowercase b, what's produced? Well, a binary number is produced. So I'm going to write 98 here. That's in base 10. And I say, well, what binary number is that? Well, I know that 64 goes into 98 once. So I'm going to subtract here. So I'll put 64 and subtract. So this is 4 here and this is 3 here. And we say, well, does 32 go into 34? Yes, it does. So I'll put a 1 here and I'm going to put 32 here. And I will subtract and we get 2. We say, well, does 16 go into 2? No. Does 8 go into 2? No. Does 4 go into 2? No. 2 goes into 2, so I'll put a 2 there, and we'll subtract a 2. There's none left over, so this final value here is 0. So what have we done? What we've done is we've taken the decimal number, 98, and we've converted it to this binary number here. So decimal 98 is equal to binary, starting from the left, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. So now you understand how to convert decimal to binary. Now you know about the ASCII table and what it represents. It's a protocol for keyboards. So now if we go into CircuitVerse, what your assignment is, is you are going to construct a keyboard to ASCII circuit. And what the circuit does is it takes a keystroke, whatever key we type, and it converts it to an ASCII value. What you're going to do is you're going to build all of this, and then you're going to output your first initial here. So my first initial is T. What you're going to do is you're going to get this all to work so that when you put in a capital T, for instance, because of my first initial, you're going to see the ASCII value output. So how do you do it using circuit verse? Well, there's a number of things that we're going to need. So first of all, when we go into miscellaneous, we have a text tool here. So remember, we can use the text tool to label things. So anytime I want to use a label, I can click and drag this in, and I can type. This is a label, and that way I can label things that I have here. And I want you to do that because it's important that you understand what each of these is. So I want you to label this 7-bit value here with these numbers above. I want you to label it just like I have it labeled. 
except you're going to say the ASCII value for capital, whatever your first initial is, is equal to some decimal value. And you're going to have to figure out what that is. You're going to have to check with the ASCII table just to confirm to make sure it's right and this is working properly. So if I go up here and I close this, we're going to go to sequential elements because what we need is a keyboard. So if I click and drag in a keyboard, that's what this is right here. So let me just show you how this works. If I hit this here, this is the reset. And what that does is it's going to clear everything in memory. And now if I go here and I type in a capital T, sorry, capital T, let me just reset again. I did lowercase, so capital T. And if I hit this here, this is what we call a clock. Clocks basically dictate when things happen in computer systems. So all computer systems have some type of clock. So when I reset this and I put in a capital T, and then I hit this clock here and I keep clicking the clock. What you can see it does is it does create this seven bit ASCII code and it should equal the value from the table. Well, capital T, if we go to the table is 84. So if we go back, then I should be able to count and just check to make sure that it did produce 84. This is in the 64's position, so 64 plus 16, because there's a 1 here, that gives me 80, plus this, because this is in the 4's position, gives me 84. So yes, it did output the correct value. Capital T is, in fact, 84 in decimal when we look at the ASCII table. Now, like I said, you're going to have to build this yourself, and then you're going to take a screen capture of all your work. So when you bring this in, you get a keyboard here and let me just bring it whoops let's just undo so when you bring this keyboard in and you put your mouse right over this here it's hard to see but that says clock you're gonna need a clock signal and that's what this is you're gonna have to go grab a clock signal you've got four connectors here so you have to know what they are. And if we zoom in here, let's we'll see if we can see exactly what this represents. So there, you can see that that is a clock. So we need a clock signal, and that's what this is. In order to get this keyboard to work, we need an enable. So circuits need to be enabled, and we do that with a high signal. So we're just going to connect a 1 to the enable, and that will always activate this keyboard here. Next one is a reset. We need to be able to clear things and clear memory. And we're going to do that with a reset. And what you're going to use is you're going to go to inputs and you're going to use this push button here. So you're going to put a push button right here. You're going to connect it to here because this is the reset for the keyboard here. And this also has a reset. So Sorry, this one right here, you're going to click it to that one. So we got to make sure we get everything connected just perfectly. Next, there's what they call an available. You are going to wire the available here, down to here, and over right to this one, which is an enable for this. This one here produces the ASCII output. And what you're going to do is you're going to send it two places. You're going to send it to an output here, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And you're going to send it to the console. The console is in sequential elements. You're going to go here. This is TTY. So you're going to bring this in. And that is this here. This is the console. It basically is the output. Think of it like the display. So that's the keyboard. And that is the console, the clock, just so you know where you get the clock signal from. It's right here, so you're going to click and drag and bring in a clock. So you're going to need that. You're going to determine the output here, and the way you're going to do that is you're going to go to output, and when you click and you bring an output in, 
it looks like a single bit. But what you can do is you can go down here and you can change the width. We want to have seven bits. So I'm going to click on this and you can see up top here that it does produce a seven bit output. So that's how you're going to create this right here. So now I've given you all the tools to create this. Your assignment is to create this same circuit that I've shown you here. And instead of using a capital T, you're going to use your first initial. Your screen capture is going to look exactly like this. Make sure you show your name up here in the corner. Make sure you find the actual decimal value for whatever your first initial is. You're going to screen capture, save it as JPEG, and you're going to hand that in. I hope that was informative. Now you know how data gets sent from a keyboard. It basically sends out a 7-bit, or sometimes we say an 8-bit number, defined by the ASCII table. That's it for this tutorial. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon.